Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to go over demand side policies and spe uh, specifically fiscal policy. Uh, we have looked at a couple of videos, a uh, few videos actually, regarding monetary policy, which is the central bank. Fiscal policy is focused on the central government. So let's go over quickly uh, demand side policies are policies by uh, the government, central government or central bank or both, trying to influence aggregate demand. And because they're trying to influence aggregate demand, it, we call this a demand side policy, also known as a demand management policy. In this example, we're gonna be closing a recessionary gap and that will be done through expansionary fiscal policies. Fiscal policies refer to the central government, not the central bank. We don't want to confuse the two. The central government and the central bank are two different uh, public institutions, or in the case of a central bank, a quasi-public institution. And they all and they both have different ways to impact aggregate demand. So the central government controls taxes. Income taxes, corporate taxes, wealth taxes, and they also control the level of government spending. So in expansionary fiscal policy, the options provided to government would be to decrease income taxes and or corporate taxes and or wealth taxes. And to also, uh, or, or not, they can just use uh, uh, changing um, the taxes, but they can also increase government spending, or do both. So those are the options left, either decrease taxes, increase government spending, or do both of them at the same time. The example we're going to look at is the current example of the COVID-19 recession due to the series of governments uh, locking down and people being mandated to stay at home that led to a dramatic decrease in consumption and investment spending and exports, which caused AD to slip and fall, actually not slip, but fall dramatically into a recession. So we're gonna assume that we're looking at a particular national economy and we're gonna be starting at full potential. And I'm gonna illustrate this with both the Keynesian and the monetarist model. You can use either one, whichever might be appropriate, but let's just um, label that. All right, so this graph A, we're going to just be looking at the monetarist model. And in graph B, uh, it's the Keynesian. Okay, so instead of doing two different videos, I can just illustrate the same concept in one video. So in graph A, we are measuring real GDP on the x-axis, price level on the y-axis. We have a perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve, a downward sloping aggregate demand curve um, as a result of the wealth effect, the international trade effect, and the substitution effect, and an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, labeled SRS1. The intersection of LRS1, SRS1, 81, at point A provides an equilibrium price level at PL1 and an equilibrium level of real GDP at YP, which is full potential GDP, where at full employment or the natural rate of unemployment, which is the sum of structural, frictional, and seasonal unemployment. In graph B, we're measuring the same, real GDP on the x-axis, price level on the y-axis. We have a Keynesian aggregate supply curve that has three sections. Section one is horizontal due to the assumption of labor contracts, minimum wage legislation, um, workers and unions resistance to uh, wage cuts, et cetera, that, so that, that creates kind of a price floor. Um, and then we have section two where we're achieving full employment, and then section three we have a perfectly inelastic level of real GDP output. Uh, we also have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve 81, and where 81 intersects the Keynesian AS at point A, provides an equilibrium price level at PL1 and real GDP at YP or full potential. So the COVID pandemic caused a dramatic decrease in aggregate demand. And we're gonna remember that AD, may not have enough space here, but AD equals consumption spending plus investment spending plus government spending plus exports minus imports. And as a result of people being mandated to stay at home, consumption spending is falling, 
uh, as a result of less spending, there's less revenue for firms, and they're going to cut their investment spending. And we can also assume that exports were falling, and perhaps even also imports. People aren't consuming as much, uh, so they're not demanding as many ex uh, exports aren't being demanded as much uh, by foreign nations and uh, the domestic nation not demanding as many imports. So all of that's going down. That causes AD to decrease from 81 to 82. Perhaps I'll exaggerate that a little bit more over here, 82. And on the Montrose model also falling from 81 to 82. So we see that the price level falls in the Keynesian model from PL1 to PL2. We're at point B, the intersection of 82 with the Keynesian aggregate supply. And we're at point B in the Montrose model, where 82 equals SRES. And that provides an equilibrium price level at PL2. So we see deflation in the Montrose model and perhaps disinflation in the Keynesian model. Uh, real GDP output falls from YP to Y recession. We have cyclical unemployment, unemployment greater than the natural rate in both models. Okay. So how can the central government intervene to close this recessionary gap, right? AD has shifted in. The central government wants to shift it back out. So they can achieve that by deciding to reduce income taxes so households have more disposable income to spend into the economy. They can reduce corporate taxes so firms can utilize more of their profits for investment spending. They can also reduce wealth taxes, again, to provide more disposable income and wealth to households. Um, they can even perhaps even decrease uh, tariffs on imports. Um, and hopefully other nations would do the same, so that would lead to an increase in exports. They can also increase government spending. In the case of COVID, there's definitely increased government spending on public health services, uh, and that would lead to increased aggregate demand. Uh, perhaps the government would also decide to maybe you know, spend more on public education, um, teachers, need, teachers and students needing more online resources to teach online when kids are in quarantine, et cetera. Um, so those are the options available. And that increase in government spending, along with the lower income taxes and corporate taxes, would hopefully increase consumption spending, potentially investment spending, and then we have the increased government spending. So AD begins to shift out from 82 to 81 to close the recessionary gap. In the Keynesian model, again, 82 shifting out to 81 to close the recessionary gap. So that is the essence of expansionary fiscal policy. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs illustrating um, a recessionary gap being closed through expansionary fiscal policy. In graph A, we're using the Montrose model. Graph B, we're using the Keynesian model. In both graphs, we're measuring real GDP on the x-axis and the price level on the y-axis. In graph A, we have a perfectly inelastic long-run aggregate supply curve labeled LRAS1. A downward sloping aggregate demand curve labeled AD1 in both graph A and B. Downward sloping as a result of the wealth effect, the interest rate effect, and the international trade effect. Uh, we have an upward sloping shore and aggregate supply curve in the monetarist model, and in graph B, we're using the Keynesian model. Keynesian aggregate supply curve has three sections. First section is horizontal due to the assumption of labor contracts, minimum wage legislation, worker or union resistance to wage cuts, employer resistance to wage cuts, providing that kind of price floor. Section two is where we're achieving full employment, and section three where we uh, have a perfectly inelastic amount of real GDP that can be produced when we have fully employed all of our resources. So in the Montrose model, where LRS1 equals 81 equals SRAS1 at point A provides an equilibrium level of real GDP at YP and equilibrium price level at PL1. In the Keynesian uh, model, where 81 equals Keynesian AS at point A provides an equilibrium price level at PL1 and real GDP at YP. 
Due to the COVID uh, pandemic, governments lock down, they mandate that uh, people stay at home. So that reduces consumption spending. So consumption spending is decreasing. And because spending is decreasing, revenue for the firms are decreasing. Um, and we can assume that potentially exports and imports are also falling due to uh, the reduced consumption. And as a result, aggregate demand decreases from 81 to 82 in both graphs. In graph A, where 82 equals the SRES curve, it provides an equilibrium price level appeal too. And real GDP at Y recession, real GDP has fallen. There is cyclical unemployment. Unemployment is greater than the natural rate and firms are reducing the quantity of their aggregate supply. And as a result of decreasing the quantity of aggregate supply, they begin to fire excess resources like labor, so unemployment rises. Same thing in the Keynesian uh, model, 80 shifts into 82, where 82 equals Keynesian aggregate supply curve at point B. The price level falls from PL1 to PL2. Real GDP decreases from YP to Y recession. And as a result of the fall in the aggregate demand, Firms begin to reduce the quantity of their aggregate supply and firing excess resources like labor, increasing unemployment and creating cyclical unemployment. That causes the central government to intervene through ex expansionary fiscal policies. They decide to decrease income taxes, perhaps also decrease corporate taxes and wealth taxes, and perhaps they also decide to increase government spending on public health and maybe public education. So that leads to rising government spending. And the reduced taxes leads to hopefully rising consumption spending and investment spending. And that pushes aggregate demand out from 82 to 81 in both models. And because of the increase in the aggregate demand, uh, firms begin to increase the quantity of their aggregate supply um, from point B to A along both supply curves. And they begin to employ more resources like labor. And so unemployment begins to decrease and real GDP begins to increase from Y recession one to YP in both models. All right. In the next video, we will look at contractionary fiscal policy. What happens when we go into an inflationary gap and how can the government pull AD back? If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you so much.